Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. So I'm coming to you from Springfield, Missouri, um, the global corporate headquarters. Well, I'm not at the global corporate headquarters, but I'm in the same town as the global, global corporate headquarters of Prime Inc. I'm here in my um, spacious and luxuriously appointed um, motel room undisclosed location. Um, I would say that it's a little bit sketchy around here where I'm staying, but I, I don't know that that wouldn't be true of any place in Springfield. Um, <laughs> I just, the first time I came to Springfield, I was like, man, I bet you could find meth really easy in this town. Um, anyway, so what am I doing in a hotel room? Well, um, I'll get to that in a minute. So today is April 12th. Um, some interesting birthdays and death dates uh, today. Um, the, um, on this day, not in the same year, but on this day, both two of the greatest boxers ever, Sugar Ray Robinson and Joe Lewis, both died on April 12th. Um, both born on April 12th, the exact same day, 1947, David Letterman and Tom Clancy. Now, I'm pretty sure that Letterman had had Tom Clancy on his show at least once and interviewed him. So that would have been kind of fun just to see two guys that have the exact same birthday, were born on the very same day. Of course, Tom Clancy has passed away. I, I told this story a while ago, um, I believe, but I'll tell it again because I, I think it shows what a, what a really genuinely decent guy Tom Clancy was. Um, so I, my dad loved Tom Clancy books. Um, my dad was Marine in World War II and he just really liked Tom Clancy books. And it just so happened that I went to law school with Tom Clancy's son-in-law, who was a former Naval officer, graduate of the Naval Academy, I won't say his name, um, but we were friends, and, um, and you know, he never, this guy never said, oh yeah, this really super world famous author is my father-in-law, but he was. And I knew that, and I never told anybody, you know, about it or anything. But I went to this friend, um, it was, I believe it was my dad's birthday, or maybe it was Christmas. But Tom Clancy had just written basically a nonfiction book. He had written nonfiction books about the, all the branches of service, and he'd written one about the Marine Corps. And I was like, man, my dad would be over the moon if I was able to get that Marine Corps book by Tom Clancy, autographed by Tom Clancy. And so I went to my friend and I said, hey, I said, you can totally say no to this. I'm not trying to put anybody in an uncomfortable position or anything, but my dad is a huge fan of your father-in-law and it would be really meaningful to my dad if he got a book autographed by your father-in-law. And he's like, yeah, man, give me the book. You know, so I got the book and took it to him, gave it to him at school. I don't know, like a week later or whatever, he gave it back to me. And um, it was a really nice inscription, um, you know, Tom Clancy, you know, use my dad's name. My dad's name was Frank. And he, you know, he's like, you know, I don't know what he said, Semper Fi, thanks for your service or whatever. But it was just, my dad was like, oh, wow. So that was, it, it, you know, not the name dropper. And I'm, I guess I'm not name dropping, but um, that was a nice gesture on both Tom Clancy's part and his son-in-law to do that favor for me. And my dad really appreciated it, so made him happy. Okay, so um, also on April 12th, um, the Civil War started, the American Civil War started. I say American because a lot of times I think Americans forget that we're, there's been civil wars all over the world. Um, ours is just one of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, so on this date, the Confederates um, in Charleston, South Carolina, fired on Fort Sumter, which was a federal outpost in Charleston Harbor. Um, it was called the Battle of Fort Sumter, but really it was mostly the Confederates shooting, 
you know, cannonballs out there to the fort. And I think maybe the fort retired, returned a little bit of fire. Um, there were a couple of fatalities, but it wasn't, you know, it was not even close to being a harbinger of what was to come. But yeah, first shots fired um, on this day in 1861 to start the Civil War. Okay, so what am I doing in a hotel room? Well, I'll cut to the chase, but I'm going to give you the background too. I have terminated, or my, my entity that my wife and I have, we have terminated our relationship with Prime and I have turned my truck in. Um, and that all happened over the last few days. But let me tell you what led up to this. So as you know, because I had him in a couple of videos, I had a trainee on my truck and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you his whole name and I'm even willing to, in the comments, if somebody asks, give out his driver code and, and, and I'll explain why. Um, so I took this guy through PSD and he seemed like a nice guy, um, a little odd, but you know, and he's, he's going to be 40 in September and never really seemed to have had any kind of meaningful job, but whatever, right? You know, people mature at different rates. So I put him, you know, I get him through PSD and I was like, you know, he's not terrible. He's not, you know, certainly not my favorite person, but it should be okay. But unfortunately, like happens with a lot of trainees and and this is not just my opinion because I had a guy last summer that I felt like this was the case but it, it's not just my opinion I think a lot of trainers would say this um, once they get a CDL they're like hey you know I don't have to do things the way you say or you know what you have to say is kind of optional um, I already you know got my CDL so you know, I, I got it made. I just got to, you know, I just got to run this 50,000 miles out on your truck, basically. You know, you don't mess, you do your shift, I'll do mine type of thing. But that's not how I train, right? And that's really not how anybody should train in TNT because I've, I've talked about this on the channel before. There's a lot of people out here that are untrained. Um, I watched a woman, and I actually videoed it and sent it to some friends that are at Prime. I watched a woman at Walmart recently, and and I say woman just because I'm, you know, I could, that's just her gender. And, I, and I, I, this is not because she's a woman. This is because she's untrained. But she could not back her trailer into a Walmart dock. She, first of all, drove around several times and tried to get lined up, like she was doing laps. Um, and she couldn't, she could not get the trailer. In fact, she hit the vehicle on her left side. She hit his mirror. He didn't really seem amped about it. You know, he just went out and like pushed it back into place. But she hit this other truck and then, and could not get the trailer at first. At first, she backed in. She didn't even have the doors open, right? I mean, and then she could not get the trailer in there. She literally dropped the trailer, like, kind of at this cocked angle. And a jockey, a Walmart jockey, put that in the door for her. And it wouldn't surprise me that she also service failed because I don't think she knew enough. And, it, it, you know, and it was like, I've tried to help people in the past, but it's like, you know, you realize they're not with a trainer. They don't, they don't want any help. And Prime is just like, yeah, you know, here's your own truck. You're a lease operator now. Um, and honestly, it was, it was humiliating um, kind of for Prime. But I, when I had my, when I was doing PSD with my trainee, um, we saw a guy that um, could not back into, and this was in daylight, could not, and, and it was, it, it was, it wasn't even an alley dock. I mean, he, there was so much room at the, this was at the Los Lunas Walmart. There was, he just drove around in circles and could, you know, 
like couldn't get his doors open, couldn't, I mean, nothing. Like he was just like, it was like if you would just grab somebody off the subway in New York City and said, hey, drive this truck to New Mexico. I mean, that was it, he couldn't do it. Um, I've talked about people that didn't know how the air system worked, didn't know how to slide tandems, any of that. Well, so going back to my student, and, and by the way, his name is Robert Logan Belcher. Um, he goes by Logan. Um, but anyway, he's got a horrendous, like, kind of like neck beard thing going. Um, but he's really doesn't, he can't grow a beard either. Um, he should just shave. But anyway, <laughs> um, so he gets on the truck and, you know, we were doing okay, but, but, you know, the money really wasn't there and I'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, I was like, but we were planning on going on home time. I was going to drop him off on Monday in South Carolina. And then I was going to do home time. And then I was like, well, I'll take a look at this and see. So, but over the past, you know, like week or so, it became more and more apparent that he really just didn't give a crap about the job. Like he'd drive and he would talk to people on the phone and say, oh yeah, when I get my own truck, you know, and he would talk about, I'm going to lease, I'm going to get my dog on the truck and blah, blah, blah. But like the dated, like the only thing that he was really fairly proficient at was going down the highway. Now I know people are going to say, well, Terry, you trained him in PSD. Why, you know, you know, why is that? Well, so PSD and, you know, I guess I kind of, you know, I kind of always felt like PSD was just the basics. Um, and I never really put a lot on the trainers from PSD when I had people that I just took over for TNT. Um, and, and I took people over with zero miles and got them through and they did well and stuff. So I never, you know, I looked at like, I looked at PSD like boot camp, you know, that's, that's where you learn to learn kind of thing. So anyway, in, you know, the backing in PSD is easier than it used to be. It's easier to teach, of course. So he got through that and I was like, okay, cool. You know, I can, you know, teach him stuff. But then, you know, it just became apparent that he was really interested in two things, sleeping and eating. And he was just not that interested in trucking. Like I would try to tell him stuff while I was driving. He wouldn't even look up from his phone. And I had a rule, by the way, that I set out in PSD. You can never have your phone on you while you're driving, right? You leave your phone in your bunk. And we have nav on the truck, but I would also give him instructions about where to go. And he, you know, put that, he would put the address in because he likes to look at a screen, I guess. Um, but, you know, it started out that he was just not really adept and I had to constantly reinforce reading road signs, looking ahead, seeing vehicles on the shoulder. Um, you know, many times he would like either, like I, I, I said it, I remember saying it several times, you're not driving a car. Like we were in, um, we were in rain up in Illinois recently and this light turned yellow and instead of like immediately getting on the brakes, he, he like went all car mode and was like, for his first reaction was to step on the accelerator. And then he was like, oh shit. And I, I was kind of surprised we didn't jackknife because the trailer was really, you know, it was, um, it was empty. Um, we had just delivered in, in Elgin at Shaw. Um, but anyway, I start noticing more and more how he has zero sense of urgency. I'd be like, hey, we're gonna stop somewhere. I'm just gonna stop and get a drink and go to the bathroom. And you know, I can, I know, cause I work off a clock. I have, I have stopped, crapped, gotten a soda, got back in the truck in nine minutes. But he would take like 39 minutes and he, he wouldn't pay attention to his, his own clock either. Like one time I was, I was asleep. He stopped, left himself on the drive line. And like 35 minutes later, 30 minutes later, I wake up and he's, he's been in 
he's been in on duty because it reverts to on duty. He's been on duty for like 33 minutes. I'm like, dude, why, why didn't you put yourself off duty? Oh, I forgot. And another time he stood up, like he, he pulled in, sets the brakes, stands up immediately, gets out his phone out of his pocket, which I told him not to, to have it there to begin with. He immediately looks at his phone and I was like, um, dude, are you going to put yourself off duty or are you just going to burn up your clock? And I taught him how to get your 30 minute break while you're doing a drop and hook by using, um, by using on duty time as well as yard move time. Um, couldn't seem to master that, like totally escaped him. He'd, he'd, uh, you know, wouldn't pay attention to the, to logs. So anyway, that was a weak spot, and and I you know I was like, dude, when you get out here, if, especially if you're leasing, your clock is your is your money. So, you know, I I just just no sense of urgency, no sense of urgency. And the other day on Sunday, actually, we were going to California on a really crappy load, really crappy load, um, and we. We get out, and, and I knew I was going to have to swap out with him in Albuquerque. And my initial thought was I was going to stop at the at the Loves in Albuquerque that was basically has nothing. It's just fuel. It's the one that's, like, right in town. And I was like, no, I'll go to the one up on the Mesa. Now, the reason I really didn't want to go to the one on the Mesa, though, is because I knew they had, like, a, a Carl's Jr. or Hardee's or whatever there. And every single time he would get up, or every single time we would change shifts or do anything, he would want to get a full-blown meal. And he had food on the truck. He, he had all sorts of crap in my fridge and all up in the shelves and everything. So sure enough, we're getting, we're, I, we, stop in, we stop in Albuquerque to do change drivers. He goes in, he plods into there and he gets a meal and he comes out and he's just, you know, freaking, you know, enjoying his lunch, you know, before he even does his pre-trip. And so we end up taking, I don't even know, like 45 minutes to an hour just to change drivers because he is eating. Now, I will say this, he's diabetic and he's, he's on all sorts of medicine. Like, it was just kind of weird, like, seeing that from somebody that's, you know, still 39, but whatever. But, like, he, he, he just didn't have any sense of urgency. Like, it wasn't. And one time I said, hey, you know, it's your turn to drive. And I had gone in the truck stop. I come out and I expect him to be pre-tripping so we can get out of there. What's he doing? He's sitting in the passenger seat with the little thing pulled out like you have on the Peterbilt's little desk thing, tray table or whatever you want to call it in the passenger seat. And I'm like, and it's been like 20 minutes, right? And I'm like, uh, what are you doing? You going to drive? It's like, I'm eating. Okay. But we got a job to do, you know? So, so anyway, he, and he also would like just leave and not say anything and, you know, walk away from the truck and, and just be totally disconnected from what, what we were supposed to be doing, you know? So on Sunday, we change in Albuquerque. He has his, you know, four course dinner from, from Carl's Jr. Feeds his face. And I am like, okay, I'm gonna go. Well, then I rode for a while. I was in the front seat. And then I'm like, after a while, I was like, like we got past like Williams, Arizona. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go lay down for a little bit. But I was, you know, I take a little while to wind down. So I was just in the back. And then I started noticing some weird movement up because I don't close the curtains. I sleep with the curtains open all the time anyway. Um, I noticed some weird movement. So I sat up. And he was pulling his phone out of his pocket, texting, reading text, putting it back in pull it out a little, I guess it would buzz again. He'd pull it out, read it, text some more. Um, so finally I said, hey man, how many times are you gonna be on your phone this drive shift? And I am not joking, I am quote, I'm gonna quote what he said. 
not many, in his kind of pathetic weak voice, not many. And I was like, that, that was like a bizarre response to getting busted doing a fireable offense. Like, I think that's 500 CSA points being on a cell phone, but don't quote me on that. But it's definitely a fireable offense at any, tr pretty much any trucking company, you're gone, right? You get a cell phone ticket, you're gone. And not many, which of course is also an admission that he was doing it, right? So I was like, all right, so now I can't sleep. I get out of the bunk, I sit in the front seat. We stop for, I probably, because I had to pee. We stop and I'm like, hey, why don't you take this opportunity to put your phone on your bunk? So he does. And I decided to truncate his drive shift because I really did want to sleep, but I no longer trusted him to just do the right thing and drive. So it was at, by this time it was after dark, we're west of Kingman on 40. And I was like, just pull into this rest area. And he was like, what are we doing? I said, we're stopping for the night. Now this I think bugged him because he always wanted to stop at a place that had food, like fast food. Um, he never didn't, like he, he would get out of the truck, even if he was getting ready to go to bed, he'd get out of the truck and go eat like a foot long sub or something. So anyway, and, and again, I know he's diabetic, but I, I know diabetics that don't eat like this um, and don't need to. And he's on, you know, he's on medication for all this stuff because um, he had one of those pill boxes like old people do. So anyway, <laughs> I, um, we get up the next morning. Now this load was, like I said, a crap load, but my fleet manager was like, hey, it delivers on Wednesday. But if you get there early, then I'll get you something else that pays more. I'm like, okay. So we were going to be to Fontana to the drop yard at around 1000 on Monday. Well, while we're going through Cali, I get a message saying, hey, there's a load that needs to be in Bakersfield at noon, a frozen load sitting in Fontana. He goes, could you deliver that? I, I said, sure. I said, he said, what would your ETA be? I said, not later than 1400. Because I was like, I can get there, I can swap trailers, and then I can get up to Bakersfield and I can be there by not later than 1400. And he's like, okay, well, we'll see if anybody else is closer. So apparently, Prime can't manage what trucks are doing what in Southern California because I was the closest guy and I was still way to hell out in the desert, but whatever. So I get there, as I said, right around 10 hundred. I quickly swap the trailers. Now, mind you, my trainee is in the bunk the whole time, even though we both slept. We both slept. He didn't drive a full drive shift. We both slept. He was like, uh, can I, I'm gonna go lay down. Like this guy would sleep, like he, he would sleep 18 hours in the top bunk. We'd get on the road and he would immediately wanna, if I was driving, he would immediately wanna go to sleep. Like not even, he would read his phone for a little bit and then he'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go to sleep. So he was in the bunk, we get to Fontana. Do you think he's like curious about what I'm doing, how to drop a trailer at a drop yard? No. And I had told him it more than once, I said, hey, cause like during PSD, he just sat in the seat while I was doing things. I was like, hey, if you don't want to get off your ass and come see what I'm doing, you're not going to learn anything in this process. And, you know, I reiterated that. But what's he do? He's still in the bunk getting his like 20 hours of sleep. So I quickly, because I don't have time to like, you know, wake him up and get him to get dressed and come outside. I quickly swap these trailers up the road towards Bakersfield. We go. We get up to Bakersfield at about 13 35. They said, hey, back in, but not all the way to door 35. I'm like, okay. So I'm waiting there. He wakes up and he's like, hey, uh, my sister went to see the eclipse and um, she wants to tell me about it. So I'm going to walk around the parking lot and talk to her. I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, 
put your vest on because we're at US cold storage and you gotta wear a vest. So he goes and then the guy comes out and he's like got the bills. He's like, hey, let's get your seal, open the door. So we go back there, I shoot the bull with him a little bit. We open it up, open up the doors. I got an entire trailer of Cool Whip. We, I back in, you know, we chalk the tires, disconnect the airline, do all that shit. So about an hour goes by and they're working on the trailer, but like I said, it's full all the way to the back with Cool Whip. Hold on, I gotta get, I gotta get my, uh, my beverage here. So um, anyway, we go, um, you know, I'm just sitting there waiting. Well, then I get a text from it. And by the way, I still have the text, of course. Um, I get a text from him. He's like, hey, I found this really great Thai restaurant and I'm getting something to eat. I was like, I didn't say anything, but I was like, what the hell? You said you were going to be at the receiver's property. And by the way, you know, if you've been to U.S. Cold Storage, you know they always have a really imposing and nice looking fence all the way around the property. He left the receiver's property without telling me and went somewhere in Bakersfield, I guess within walking distance, he didn't have a lot of stamina, to, to get Thai food. And then he comes back and he comes back and I'm like, you know, and I, again, I didn't go off on him or I didn't really say anything. Cause I was like, he is so not able to read the room. He is so clueless and just, and he was just soft, mentally, physically soft. And, you know, I'm not like, I've, as I've gotten older, I take people at, at where they are, but when somebody is like that and doesn't, but also doesn't want to try, doesn't really give a shit, and you're out here like doing the best you can um, to train them, and oh by the way, my truck is paying them t about twelve to fourteen hundred bucks a week after taxes, you know, and so he comes back to the truck. And he's like, yeah, man, that stuff was awesome. You know, they had 4.6 out of five stars on Google. It's like, whoa. I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. So guy comes out, we get the bills, we pull out. I PC to the truck stop in Grapevine, the, where there's a Petro and a TA. Um, and you may know, it's really nice, by the way. So many, you know, they have everything you can imagine. Panda, Chipotle, In-N-Out, McDonald's, Wendy's, IHOP. Um, they have a Denny's. Uh, they have um, Starbucks. You know, I think they got a Black Bear. You know, they, they got a lot of food choices. There's also the outlet malls there. So it would be a great place. There's hotels. It would be a great place to do a 34. If you just had to do a 34 somewhere in Cali, it's it's the exit right below the grapevine, just north of the grapevine. And uh, yeah, so it was cool. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna work out. I'm, you know, whatever, dude, you, you had your Thai food, you know. And I'd only had like three hard boiled eggs to eat all day. But, cause that's what was on the truck. I didn't get a chance to go to Thai food. So anyway, I'm like, okay, I'm going to work out, walk around, and then get some meat. So I'm walking all over the, you know, the big area, getting my steps in. I walk down this road, then I come back, and on that road is Chipotle. So I go in and eat. I come out. I eat there. I come out, and he's walking down the same road. And we just pass each other. Hey. Um, well, then I go back to the truck, but then I lift weights a little bit more. And because I, I was so hungry that at Chipotle, I, I almost thought about getting a second bowl, but I didn't. Um, so I, I'm like, well, you know, in a little while, I might go over to In-N-Out and get like just a, a hamburger. So I end up doing that, you know, I'll come back to the truck. Okay, we go to sleep. We're just hanging in the truck. And we got a pre-plan for a load that was picking up an Oxnard on Tuesday morning, a produce load. And it was coming out here to Missouri. And it actually paid pretty well. 
So I was like, you know, I ask, I'm like, what time is this appointment? They're like, well, we won't know till tomorrow. So in the morning I get up early, not sort of early. I get up at like 7.30 and I'm like, all right, well, I'm not gonna wait for the appointment time. We're gonna, we're gonna get this trailer washed out and then get over to Oxnard because it's about a three hour drive with traffic. And then we hopefully will be over there around noon. So I send a message to that effect to my fleet manager. And my fleet manager's like, yeah, that's a good plan because usually they load in the afternoon. I was like, okay. So at 7.55 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, I sent a message because I had gone inside the Petro to go to the bathroom. I sent a message to my trainee because he's still in bed. I text him and I say, hey, I want to leave at 8.30. So about like five minutes, 10 minutes later at the most, I'm back in the truck. So now it's, you know, it's like 8.05 to you know, maybe 8.10, but no later than that. I get back in the truck and I'm like, hey, did you see my text? He's still in bed, of course. And I said, he's like, no. I, he's, what, he's like, what'd you say? I said, I, I texted you that I want to leave at 8.30. I said, so if you need something, like you need to eat or something, go do it now and then get back here. He's like, no, no, I'm fine. Um, I ate um, Chipotle last night and after I had that Thai food and I'm really full. I'm like, okay. And so I said, okay, fine, because we're going to go over to Blue Beacon. But while we're over there, if you need to use the TA, there's stuff over there too. You can, or if you got to go to the bathroom, you can just go at the Blue Beacon or whatever. He's like, okay. So I said, I'm going to do a quick um, pre-trip. So I log on duty. I, you know, I start checking, like I... Did the light? I put the light test on, and the engine's running, so I'm pressurizing my air system, and I'm just going around looking at the lights, check my air lines, look at my undercarriage, um, go back, check the tandems, walk around the back of the trailer, check those lights, walk up the right side of the trailer, around the front of the truck, and then I get in the driver's side, because I was gonna drive. I get in the truck, and he's nowhere to be found. He's vanished. I'm like, what the hell? So I was like, all right, well, he probably went inside. Now, mind you, if you've been to that Petro, you know that the, the way the trucks park, if, depending on the row you're in, you can see the building. Like you can see the door when somebody comes out. And that's exactly the row I was in. Like I could see that gazebo and the door. So, you know, I was like, all right, well, I got some paperwork to do. And I did three trip reports and submitted them. I get back in the front seat and now it's like 8.29. Now it's 8.30, I'm looking, I don't see him anywhere. He hasn't called me, hasn't texted me. Um, 8.31 comes. No sign of him. Because, you know, I'm like, if he went to the bathroom, like how long could that have taken, right? So 8.32 comes, I still don't see him. And I'm like, all right, screw it. I'm going to go to get in line at the Blue Beacon. Because we all know Blue Beacons, It's there's almost always a line. I don't care what time of day it is. And this is, you know, on I-5 in, in California, in the Central Valley. So I start the truck up and I go out of the parking lot and I head over there. I'm almost in the blue beacon, you know, like the driveway. I get a call from him. Hey, where'd you go? I was like, I left because it was past 830. I said, I'm at the blue beacon, but I'm not running some trucker fantasy camp. I have stuff to do. I'm trying to make a living. You can walk over to the Blue Beacon. And if you know that intersect or that interchange, the Blue Beacon is across the f across the 5. So it's maybe maybe a half a mile. Um you know, but he's been walking around. He's not he's not an invalid. He's not in a wheelchair. 
half a mile and you weren't ready to go and you're never ready to go. <laughs> so I get in the line at Blue Beacon. So now this is maybe two minutes after I called him or after, excuse me, after he called me, maybe two minutes. My fleet manager calls me. My fleet manager's name is James Wyckoff, by the way. He calls me, he's like, hey, did you leave your trainee at a truck stop? I'm like, fuck yeah, I did. I said, you know, he doesn't want to be on time. You can't do that. You're, you know, that's a problem with you. Now, he, here's the thing. I didn't ask to train this guy. They came to me. My fleet manager begged me to train. He's like, well, we really need people to train. And against my better judgment, I was like, all right, I'll do the PSD certification class again. I did all that. And I was like, you know, because I had a bad experience with TNT last summer because this the guy I had then was like a lazy turd. And so he's like, I don't want to hear it. You know, you, you just need to be act like an adult. And I'm like, uh, OK, OK. I said, uh, you know, I said when he called you, did he tell you he was texting while driving? No, you should have told us. Well, here's the thing. This guy hit a trailer at a sh at a receiver um, because he wouldn't get out and look. And he also wouldn't follow my instructions when I told him how to back in there. He's like, oh, I think I hit that trailer. I'm like, okay, well, go look at it. If there's damage, you better report it. I don't think he did. Um, but he has a CDL, right? Like, that's the system. And, you know, and... Candidly, you know, it wasn't the tractor. So I was like, all right. But he, so he had a Shaw trailer and um, in Elgin. He also ignored my instructions several times. Like one time I was like, hey, you're going to take 70. Just stay right on 70. And he decided he had to use GPS. And, G, and I wake up and he's in this like crazy ass construction zone. I'm like, are you on 70? No. I said, why not? Well, the GPS told me to go this way. I said, oh, is the GPS buying the fuel? I said, I told you to do something. How hard is it to stay on I-70 through Indianapolis? It's not. In fact, it's easier than it's ever been. And, and so my fleet manager, though, was like totally didn't want to hear anything. He was just like, you can't, you can't abandon a trainee in a dangerous place. I'm like... It's a fucking truck stop that he willingly walked into. It's not like I dropped his ass off in Compton, his, his, you know, or, you know, El Monte or something. I, it was a truck stop he went into and we had just had this conversation. It was like, it was like he didn't hear a fucking thing I said and even what he said, he didn't hear. So, you know, my fleet manager's like, well, I want you to just bring him back to Springfield and he can get off your truck. And I'm like, that sounds like a great idea. Amen. Well, then right about then, I get a message that the our appointment has been pushed back to Tuesday in Oxnard. So I said, hey, I, I don't want to wait around with this guy because I don't want him on the truck now anyway. And and I'll get to the 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 money in a second. So, so I said... I'll just freaking bring him back to Springfield right now. And he said, you're going to deadhead back to Springfield? I'm like, sure. You know, because money matters to me, but but it, money only matters to me in, in terms of the respect that it shows. I don't necessarily value it, but I expect that people will value my contributions and, you know, pay me what's fair. So anyway... Um, he gets back in the truck and I'm like, you know, you don't have any interest in doing this job. And I hope that you find a career that you are actually interested in. Or maybe you will just get interested with your next trainer. He doesn't say a word. And you know, that, that was his MO. As soon as you said anything to him that was the least bit harsh, he just shut down. Because one time he was backing, and I think that was still in PSD, he was trying to back into a loading dock, and he stopped. I was outside the truck at the back, and I was guiding him like how far he had to go and you know how to get the 
trailer even in the lane and stuff. He stopped what he was doing with me in the at the back of the trailer looking at him in the mirror. He stopped what he was doing to talk to some dude who had nothing to do with us, who was another truck driver. He didn't even fucking work there. You know? And and I was like and I was like, hey. And then I, I got went up there and I'm like and I yelled at him. I was like, hey man, what the fuck? I'm back here. I'm directing you. Why don't you pay attention to me so you don't run me over? And he got all red in the face and just totally shut down. And I'm like, so, so anyway, I kind of knew that this was enough for all the people at Prime who don't like me because of the Jason Pearson stuff I did because of the Christmas stuff I did, because calling them out on all sorts of stuff. And I was like, man, they're going to try to, uh, they're going to, they're going to try to terminate my, or not try, they're going to terminate my contract. So we drive back and my fleet manager keeps asking, I don't get any loads. I go through the meat patch, nothing. And I, I made myself available. I got nothing. Cause I was like, you know, I'll bring something back. I'm just not going to wait for that load of produce out of Oxnard. Nothing, right? Nothing. I was like, I started telling friends and you can ask them. I was like, they're going to, they're going to terminate my contract. So yesterday we're not even back to Springfield, but because my fleet manager couldn't possibly work a minute past five and his boss, Stan Allman, who is, uh, you know, he took it personally when I used the term corporate douchebag in an email one time. Um, but I'll, I'll get to them in a little bit because actually once I get home, I'm going to do a live and I am going to lay out a ton of dirt on Prime that I've never talked about, including stuff about Jason Pearson, including stuff about uh, conversations that happened around the Christmas bonus thing, as well as other stuff that Prime has done that's just shows a, a real lack of professionalism and just, you know, generally good corporate practices. And, and, but anyway, I'll get to that in the live. Um, and I'm probably going to do it on maybe Sunday. Um, we'll have to, I'll have to see, but I'll put out, I'll put out an announcement. So anyway, yesterday at 4.55 p.m., I get a call from my fleet manager, James Wyckoff, and his, his um, the guy whose butt he's up, who's Stan Allman. And by the way, Stan's picture is on the website, Prime's website, and they must have snapped that when he wasn't up Robert Lowe's butt. But anyway, and I feel bad for Robert Lowe, and I'll tell you why. Not because he's, you know, wealthy or people like him. You know, I don't feel bad for that. But it's got to hurt having Stan Allman's head up there all the time. Um, cause I think Robert Lowe is a decent guy, but he doesn't really control the company anymore. And I, and I really think that, um, there's just a bunch of, he has a bunch of greedy underlings and they have their cult and, you know, Robert's there, but, but like I said, I don't, I don't think he controls the day to day operations. Um, and I'll get into that too, because there's some really weird stuff going on at prime. That's almost kind of like when, U.S. Express started um, variant, um, but I'll I'll talk about that in the live too. But anyway, um, so they're like, yeah, uh, we just wanted to talk to you. We thought you know before we, we we thought we could do this face to face, but since you're not here, we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, you know how did they say it? Terminate the operating agreement. Well, here's the thing. Um, you can't just call somebody up and terminate a written contract, like unless the contract says that, which it doesn't. And the other thing too, is that I personally, Terry personally, has no what is called contractual privity with prime or success leasing. What, who does have contractual privity, because remember, corporations are people, is the my LLC, or actually it's my wife's LLC. 
that entity has corporate or it has contractual privity, meaning it's a party to the contract. So they call me, calling me up, first of all, trying to do it over the phone, that's, that's not consistent with the contract or, or the law. And then the other idea is that they didn't mention our entity in one, at, at all. They were just like all casual about it and shit because they just wanted to get out of the office and go do whatever they do. And I was like, I just listened. And they're like, do you have any questions? I'm like, mm, no, not really. I said, I, I'll, I'll get with success about my truck. You know, but that was it. Oh, and I said, I'll drop my trainee off because I, I promised that I would drop him off at the, uh, at the campus in when I got to Springfield. Now, here's the interesting thing about what happened though, is because, you know, my mind was just, I didn't make, I didn't say anything to my trainee. I didn't, you know, I didn't, we really didn't speak at all coming back. We stopped a few times to get showers and I was like, you know, I would tell them the very basics. So anyway, excuse me, I was like, that's kind of crazy what they just did because they just told me and, and you know, I'm different than other drivers, but can you imagine telling somebody who didn't have like the training I had or the, you know, just the experience I have that we're firing you essentially, we'll, we'll say that. And, um, you know, you, you're done. When he was like mm, probably a hundred miles from your terminal, and he had a trainee on board who is an employee of your company. They, he's not, it's not an employee of him and it's an adult. So it's like, you know, I had this guy on my truck that's a mindless dolt who, you know, honestly couldn't do very much. And I'm like, we're out in the freaking sticks in Eastern Kansas. And I was like, it, you know, at first, I was like, I could just, like, like they can't, they can't fire you twice, right? Once you're fired, you're fired. Unless they rehire you, that's the only way they can fire you twice. Why would you fire or think you were firing somebody who has a student on their truck out in the middle of nowhere, you know? Because if you've, if you've driven across 400 in Kansas, especially east of Wichita, you know what it's like. From, from Wichita to the Missouri border, there's really not much. And I was like, what, first of all, what he couldn't do anything if I, if I stopped at one of those little gas stations at a crossroad and said, get out. He couldn't do anything about it. Um, and then what's he going to do? Call and complain, call mommy again and complain to my fleet manager. What my, what's my fleet manager going to do? He has no leverage over me. Like that was so stupid of them. And they're just fortunate that I'm like, you know, I got a wife and a daughter at home. I got kids. I don't want to go to prison. Um, but, but even if I just ditched him, like, let's say that I didn't do anything really crazy. I just was like, get the fuck out of my truck. Here's your shit. And I just threw his bags out. Like, what could they have done to me? Nothing. They have zero leverage over me at that point. Zero. And I was like, way to go. You know, I, and they're just lucky. He's lucky that I'm kind of a man of my word. Um, unlike my fleet manager. So anyway, we get back to Springfield. I got an empty on my back. I go to inbound. The guy, the mechanic says to me, hey, is this empty? I said, yeah. He goes, you know what? You can just, because I'm sure it was already in the computer system. He goes, hey, you can just drop this right here. I said, right here? He's like, yeah. I said, okay. And I get out and he, he was cool. You know, I don't have any beef with him. He was cool. And he's like, Hey, uh, you, you got to take a piss test. But then I could see on the, on his screen, it says 
Robert Logan Belcher. I was like, oh, that's this other guy. So I, so I stick my head in the driver's door. I'm like, hey, you got a piss test. So he gets out. And now in the meantime, I'm cranking down the landing gear, disconnecting the trailer, right? He gets out and he goes and talks to the mechanic, but he is white as a sheet, white as a sheet. And I was like, whoa. I said, that was kind of weird, very weird, because I have never, never, and I've trained maybe not 10 people, but close to 10 since I've been at Prime. I've had at least 10, probably close to 10 people on my truck. I, I don't want to count through it, but, but I've never, not once, ever had a trainee get a piss test. Never. And I'm like, that's weird. Now, maybe it's random. Maybe it's not. But I still don't know why the guy, for, all he wanted to do was sleep. Like, he, he, he slept an inordinate amount of time. But so anyway, this morning, so they're like, I was like, yeah, I'll probably keep the truck. They're like, oh, okay. So I, but I couldn't stay at Prime last night, so I just stayed over at the Loves. But this morning, I, I actually checked into a hotel, just put all my stuff in. It didn't take that long because I was traveling pretty light. I didn't have any of my cycling gear or anything. I didn't have my bike, of course. But I didn't even, I had taken other stuff out of the truck because the beauty of that Peterbilt was I didn't have much storage. Um, so I didn't, I mean, I got plenty of stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's over there, but I got totes and, but it wasn't that much. It, it didn't take me very long at all to get all the stuff out of the truck. And then I just took the truck and went over to, uh, to back by inbound and parked it over there and. I signed a little form saying I was uh, turning the truck in. I don't owe him any money. Um, so I'm, but w the other thing I did this morning was I sent a, a, a written termination to Prime. And I said that my company was terminating with Prime and that, that, um, you know, I had, you know, cause I now have the authority because I didn't have the authority because, you know, like I said, I'm not the managing member of that LLC. So I got the authority to terminate the agreement from my managing member, who's my wife. And um, I terminated with cause and I listed several breaches of the contract. The most important being um, material misrepresentation of of load prices and stuff like that. And and now I can kind of get to the finances. So in the last month, my fleet manager has lied to me. My fleet manager is James Wyckoff. He lied to me at least twice about prices on loads. He, he got me to commit to, you know, taking loads um, based on misrepresentations. One, the first time was when he asked me to repower a load from Lincoln, Nebraska to Wisconsin because the guy couldn't get it there on time. So I'm bailing out the company to make an on-time delivery. He told me that that load was gonna run at $2.40 a mile. But I don't even see a pre-plan or anything because it's a repower. So until you actually tell dispatch that you've swapped trailers, you don't see that dispatch. Well, I get the dispatch, it's like 500 miles and it's paying less than $2 a mile. He said it was gonna be 240 a mile. So the next morning he's like, oh, that didn't, uh, that didn't pay as much as I thought. Let me look into that. So they added, a f I mean, literally 12 bucks, 12 bucks to that load. So it took it from like, it was actually paying worse than the load I was on. And I was kind of, originally I was like, oh yeah, 240 is way more than I'm getting. Cause I was getting like a buck 95. This load actually paid less. He fucking lied his ass off to me and then never did anything about it. Never did anything about it. Then this last load to California, it was a absolute shit load. Okay, so we had been in Illinois. I told you, I told you Belcher hit the trailer in, in um, 
hit the trailer in at at Shaw in Elgin. So we did a pre-plan, but we had to sit for like over 34 hours to pick up this high val load. So the load paid well, but we sat. We we the first night we were at the at the Loves in Hampshire, Illinois, off the off of the Jane Adams off the 90. Then we went down to Manuka and I went and watched trains. Of course, my trainee slept. I offered to let him stay, you know, I said like, hey, you can hang at the terminal. I'm gonna go watch trains like I like to do. He's like, no, I'll just, I'll just sleep. Okay, dude. Um, and I went and watched trains. Then we went to, you know, we got, went to the Loves there in where they have NAF, NAF right down the road off of 80. And yeah, so I got that correct, you know, so yeah, it was a high val, but we had to wait over a day and a half to pick it up. So that, that's useless, right? Cause I'm, I, he's costing me money every day. There's a frictional cost to my truck every day. So then I said, I want to get out to the West coast. I get a load with an 1106 mile deadhead from basically Groveport, Ohio. So Columbus to um, uh, Guymon, Oklahoma at Seaboard. I, I was like, this load pays like bup kiss, right? Like it was paying like maybe, maybe a buck 10, maybe a buck 10. When you added up unloaded and loaded miles, it was maybe a dollar 10 a mile. He's like, Hey, I know he calls me, right? And he, he never called unless he needed something, right? Never would call and be like, hey, how you doing? Never, that never happened. Although I've had driver managers in the past, he used to call and be like, hey man, how's it going, you know? Like my driver manager at night used to call. Um, same with my driver manager at, uh, at GP Transco, he would call and be like, hey, Terry, how you doing, you know? Hey, this is what I'm up to, I'm gonna get you this load, blah, blah, right? My fleet manager never called unless he was desperate for something. At, none of the fleet managers will call you. Nobody calls you unless they're desperate for something or they think you've really screwed up. So he calls me, he's like, hey, look, uh, I sent you that pre-plan, but I, I know it's terrible, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get you, um, uh, I'm gonna get you like money, f extra money for the deadhead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get a dollar per mile but I'm gonna get extra money. No, he didn't get jack shit, not one penny. In fact, because we dropped it in Fontana, I actually got less on that load. That load, I'm not certain that it was a dollar to a mile, which is the guarantee. Um, that's how bad the load was. And of course, I didn't. I came out of California empty-handed. And you know, you could say, well, Terry, you're just that's because you're, you know an impulsive asshole. But it's like, you know, I got a guy on my truck that's just a dirt bag. I want to get rid of him as soon as possible. Now, here's the funny thing. I could have just freaking take, I knew what was going on. I knew exactly what was going to happen when I got back here. I could have taken him to Salt Lake because I could go anywhere I want with that truck. I was buying the fuel. I could, I should have taken him to Salt Lake just, just to really throw a wrench in the plans. But, but I kind of got to say that I was at my, I was close to my end with Prime anyway, because the money was so bad. I was, once I dropped this guy at home, I wasn't going to let him back on the truck anyway, unless something crazy happened. Like I got, like they just found extra money for me. And here's the reason. I went ahead and looked at the last four full weeks and he was on the truck the whole time and we were available the whole time. So... This week, so the pay, the settlement that was issued today, I had, I got, this is my gross revenue, $4,567. And like some of that money was actually detention from like a few weeks ago, $4,567 gross revenue on a team truck. The week before, 6,083 gross revenue on a team truck. 
those are solo numbers. And 4567, I would be kind of upset if I was solo and I only had that much. I'd be like, yeah, that wasn't a great week. But with a but paying a trainee, that's ridiculous. That's that's robbery. Um, and by the way, those numbers would have been those numbers without any of this drama, without you know my trainee being a a little freaking spineless amoeba and whining to mommy. Um, the week before that, though, eleven hundred or excuse me, eleven thousand one seventy. Not bad. That's pretty good. That's what it should be, right? Team truck. Because, I mean, if you do the math, right, that's 5500 bucks for each driver. So each driver should be generating 5500 in revenue a week. Um, and then the week before that, 6441 Again, solo. Solo. And the week, not this week, but last week, where I got 6083 we only went 2,800 miles. Team truck, 2,800 miles. My friends, if you are training at Prime, and I know some people are doing okay. Like I had a week with 11,000. But that, the fact that we did 2,800 miles, the fact that we did 4,567 of, of gross revenue, that is absolutely ridiculous. That tells me that Prime is really struggling. Because, and, and you know, because we were waiting, you know, even to get those numbers, we were waiting around. 2,800 miles in a week? Come on. I, I used to, I, I could run 2,800 miles in five days, you know, solo. That's nothing. That's nothing. You know? I mean, and that's running that's running 60 miles an hour. That's nothing. So anyway, what did I get? What did I what was net to the truck? So this week, <laughs> $226. I pay my it cost me about 1200 bucks to have that trainee, that dead wood piece of crap on my truck, non-contributing pile of dung, you know, three-toed sloth on my truck, cost me 1200 bucks. I got 226 or the truck did. Last week, 1767. The week before that, 4540. The week before that, 1488. So gross revenue, we got, we averaged $7,065 a week gross revenue for four weeks with a trainee on the truck the entire time and being available for dispatch the entire time. $7,000 average, right at, basically right at 7,000. For our net to, the, net to the truck for those four weeks, $2,005 a week. So basically $2,000 a week to share my space with a guy that kind of smelled bad a guy that um, has some weird, and, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna criticize him for this, but it, it is just something you deal with. He had some weird like ticks or whatever, um, and a guy who had zero interest in what we were doing. Like he was not a teammate. He and he didn't even he wouldn't even like I would talk to him. He would just stare at his phone. You know, I mean, he would tell me about some stuff. Like, but, but yeah, like, I, 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 you know, I should, it should have been a red flag when he got on my truck, probably like the first day of PSD, he started telling me about, you know, his life and everything and, and how he, and, and he used this term to describe himself. He says, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, he didn't please me. He, uh, but he, he was also, you know. Like some some friends of mine have used the B word, but I like to reserve that for women that are like tough. Like sometimes people call them the B word. I feel like this guy doesn't even deserve to be called that. Like my dog is the B word, right? Like my spade pit bull is the B word. But this guy, 
it, you know, he doesn't even deserve that. Um, but, you know, and somebody said to me, hey, Terry, you should tell your fleet manager about all of this stuff that happened with him. And my response was, no, that's what Prime gets. This guy is a walk-in, walk-in, talking, drooling, fooling, um, service failure. He doesn't get out of bed. Like, seriously, I would be like, hey, we're going to leave at 8 o'clock in the morning. I tell him the night before. At 7.59, he would still be in his bunk. And, and unless he had to go to the bathroom, then at 7.56, he would get out of the bathroom and start his slow slog to the, to the toilets, you know? And um, he routinely delayed our departure. And you could say, well, it's arbitrary to want to leave at, you know, 7.30. Why can't you leave at 7.34? And the answer is, for the same reason, I can't, I can't bring an OTF IF load in that's due at 12.06, I can't bring it in there at 12.17. I mean, I can, they'll take it, but it's a service failure. And um, I'll get into this more in the, uh, in the live, but I, I've been hearing some really disturbing crap about service failures, especially at Walmart from Prime drivers. And I think Prime has just done it to themselves. Like, if you say anything, you know, if you're hard on a trainee, and I don't mean like, you know, I, because here's the thing. There are, there are trainers out there that are sexually harassing people. There are trainers out there that are drinking, um, you know, while they have a trainee on the truck. There are, you know, like they'll drink during their 10. Um, there are trainers out there that are, you know, making people sleep in the top bunk while they're driving breaking all sorts of rules and and but if no one says anything hey that's a great relationship there are trainers out there that you know like i talked about earlier in the video these people aren't even trained they don't know how to do anything um so when a guy like me who you know look i was in the military and I have a sense of propriety and a sense of urgency and a sense of punctuality. And I'm not saying lots of people don't. My son, who also trains, was saying how he had to keep, you know, like he had a trainee and he would ha they would have to wait, he would have to wake them up all the time for their shift, even though they knew what time their shift started because he runs a straight clock, 12 hour blocks. I don't do that. But, you know, when I tell you the night before, hey, I want to get underway at 7.30, it, I shouldn't be sitting there waiting for you at 732 to get back on the truck. That's disrespectful. It's also hor a horrible habit. And those are the people that don't get shit done on time, that cost companies accounts, you know? So anyway, that's my story. That's why I fired Prime today in an email um, with the correct corporate authority. And um, yeah, so uh, my wife's coming to get me. We got, I got all my stuff here. Um, I'll probably, I might do a video later. I, I, I've talked to a few companies because um, I kind of, you know, again, I had been feeling like I wanted to leave anyway. I thought I would probably do it in May because I thought I might finish this guy up. Um, <clears throat> but then when, when these, with these numbers, it's like, no, I wasn't even going to finish him. And, you know, with the cost of my new truck, uh, you know, compared to my old truck and, and honestly, I don't see it really getting better. I thought I did at first at the first part of the year, but some of these loads, I'm like, no, there's something amiss at, in reefer sales. And I don't know what it is, um, but Prime does not want to change their system. They are very ossified, and I think it's it's definitely bad for drivers. But I want to end this on a really positive note, and I want to tell you something that happened just today. So this morning, I didn't get my settlement statement like I normally do an email. 
So around eight o'clock, I messaged, because my app was still working, um, I messaged my payroll lady. And her name, I won't say her name, because Prime will probably get mad at her. They'll, I mean, they know who it is. But, but so I messaged her and I was like, hey, I didn't get my statement today. Um, is there a reason for that? And she's like, oh, I don't know, but I'll send it to you. She, you know, she messaged me back. She goes, I'll email it to you. I'm like, okay, cool. So she emails it to me, but then page one was missing. And so I was like, hey, um, can you send me page one? And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just resend it. And then all of a sudden, like the message came through, like the automatic message that would normally come at like four in the morning or whatever. So, you know, I just said, oh, got it. Appreciate it. Thanks for your help. And then she's like, you're welcome. And then I sent, but then I was like, you know what? My payroll lady in three, almost three years here at Prime, she never dropped the ball. She never was nasty to me about anything. Even when I was turn in reports late and she would like remind me she was she was always nice about it and she was you know like she never whined if I s said if I had gotten permission to submit something late or whatever and I was just like you know it, it's kind of funny because when I was at Shugel the only person that I really liked was my payroll lady and it wasn't because she did payroll it's because she was just competent and nice and so I sent an email to my, uh, I sent an email to my payroll lady and I said, you know, um, we've terminated our contract with Prime, but I just wanted to thank you for always being so helpful. It was very appreciated. Best regards, Terry. Just that simple email. And I got a message back from her and she's like, oh, I'm sad you're leaving. And this is, this is a quote. I wrote it down. She said, um... She said, we, you know, I really appreciate, I really appreciated working with you. And she said, and this is the last sentence she typed. She said, quote, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have anything, end quote. And you know, that quote, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have anything. That totally embodies why she was so nice and so competent. She's one of the few people, it seems, in that building that realized that the drivers were the whole reason anything else exists at Prime. All that stuff, every single thing you see, the basketball court, the cafeteria, the carpeting, the walls, all the people having jobs, the pickleball court, every single thing there exists because of truck drivers. Truck drivers in the past and current drivers. And she, she appreciates that. She didn't just, she knows that her livelihood is totally dependent on truck drivers. The people that are, that don't get to go home every night, the people that are gone for weeks or months at a time. And I very much appreciate that she feels that way. And I wish more people, not just at Prime, at other trucking companies too, candidly, but I wish more people that made their living off the backs of truck drivers who you know, are always the profit centers at a trucking company uh, I wish more people realized that. I, I know a lot of people say, oh, we really appreciate the drivers. But when you see them in action, you know that's not true. Um, you know, but anyway, I'll get to more of that in my live. Um, I know this has been a long video, a lot of information. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Well, I am going somewhere, but uh, this channel is not going anywhere. And um, I'm going to find, you know, I'm going to find a new job. It's not going to be hard. Um, my daughter actually said to me, she goes, are you going to, are you just going to retire? I was like, eh, I still got some, something left in the tank. I mean, candidly, I had a 39 year old on my truck and I could run circles around him. I feel like, you know, I got some, you know, and I, I have some goals and, you know, 
we're in a we're in a um, we're in a you know we're in a good financial uh, maybe not good we're in an okay financial position. Um, you know, I got paid my per diem today. We got paid salary today, like like we do. Um, even though, what did I get? Two twenty six. Um, so we're we're okay. Um, you know, we just got some stuff we want to do, and so you know, generating some income is going to be part of that. Um, but I'm going to, you know, and and a large part of the reason I wanted to leave Prime, I got to the point where I wanted to leave Prime, is because Prime no longer, you know, when I came here, I said I wanted a job where I would have a lot of latitude and I could still make the kind of money I was making, like when I was at GP Transco. But but you can see that. You know, because, okay, so this $2,005 average over four weeks, you know, now tax has got to be paid out of that. I don't have a 401k with a company match. You know, so, like, it's pro it's likely that I'm going to go back to a company job. I'm just going to find a better company that, you know, gives me, you know, I can take more time off. I do want to be home more. And that was the thing. My originally, I was like, yeah, you know, I can make, I can kill it for like a month at a time and take a week off and, or kill it for six weeks and take 10 days off. But over the last year and a half, that just hasn't been possible. I've just, and I think that's true with a lot of us. We, we spend more time on the road and have less to show for it than we did, you know, and, and I know it was a great market. Don't get me wrong. But there are still people out there that are able to do it. Uh, I just don't think there's too many of them at Prime. Um, you know, there's going to be some outliers. There's going to be some people that kill it. But, you know, the, the guy that says he killed it this week and last week and the week before, he's going to have three weeks where he gets 100 bucks. I mean, stuff happens. You know, that's the, and that's the problem. When you're barely, you know, 2000 bucks a week, that's barely making it worth it. And that's, uh, that's four weeks where I had no breakdowns. I didn't even have a flat tire, nothing. My truck got hit a couple times, but it, we, we just kept running, you know? Um, so anyway, I don't want to go on too much longer, but hey, thanks for watching if you watch this long. Um, like I said, Tim Travels is going to keep traveling and keep doing videos, and we're going to keep having fun, and I'm going to keep calling out bullshit when I see it in, you know, corporate America. And, uh, you know, I try to stick up for myself, but really I try to stick up for other people. My, I mean, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm kind of set, right? Like I already have a pension. Um, our houses, houses are both almost paid off. Um, I'm in good health. You know, I have a lot to be grateful for. Um, and I know a lot of people, my age and even younger are not in in as good a position and you know i think part of it is because of corporations um and how americans are treated how american workers are treated so i'm not bitter or anything it's just a learning experience and and let me say this too in in closing really i promise in closing i am so grateful for my time at prime because i made a lot of friends and, um, you know, I have a great network of just people that I enjoy just shooting the bull with. And we're from all different walks of life, all different parts of the country. We're different, you know, genders, races, but it's, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. And that's what makes it all worth it, you know? Um, so the fact that I had to deal with corporate douchebags and people that lied to me and, you know, would cheat me and it, it's okay. Because the, the friendships I've made, that makes it, it really does make it worth it. Because like I said, I'm going to be fine. But the friendships I made, I, can't, I couldn't buy that, you know. So I'm grateful for that. Um, and, you know, I always learn something. So anyway, uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Look for my announcement on the live because I'm going to, I'll do it for two, three hours as long as people are interested. Because I got a lot to talk about. So I'll see you soon. Bye.